Now we're going to discuss an introduction to the eight stages of a fertility cycle and an average timeline. I've broken down a cycle into eight different stages and I'm going to talk about those in more detail throughout the programme. But for now, I'm just going to talk about an approximate timeline and roughly what you can expect at each stage of the cycle. By breaking the cycles down into eight stages, it makes it a bit easier to understand because there's so much information to take on board um, that having it all at once can be a bit overwhelming. So you can kind of come backwards and forwards to the different stages depending on if they're applicable to you and what you want to know about at what time. So stage one is down regulation. So you have down regulation if you're doing something called a long protocol. So your doctor might have mentioned like you're having the long protocol. And this means that two and a half to four and a half weeks into your cycle, you start medication to basically stop your ovaries from working. On average, you start the medication on day 21, but in some cases you might start it slightly before, you might start it slightly after. But this stage is to shut everything down and to almost give your body like a blank slate before you go on to stage two, which is your stimulation medication. Stage two, you start your stimulation medication and this stage lasts approximately one to 14 days. Now, depending on if you're doing a long protocol or a short protocol will depend on when you take your medication. So if you're doing a long protocol, you've had stage one, you've been downregulated, you'll have an ultrasound with your clinic and they will give you a date to start your stimulation medication. And we consider this day one of your cycle. If you are waiting um, for your period to come naturally, you're not having any downregulation, day one of your cycle will be your LMP, which is your last menstrual period. You contact your clinic when you get your period and you normally start your medication the following day or the day after. This medication basically stimulates your ovaries to produce lots of follicles and lots of eggs. There's a variety of different medications that, that are used. You might have heard of Clomid, um, Gonal F or Menopure, but the type of medication will be completely dependent on your doctor and your clinic and their prescription for you. You'll be monitored throughout this progress through like ultrasounds and blood tests just to make sure that you're responding in the right way to the medication um, and then once your follicles um, have developed to a size that the clinic are happy with, they look mature, um, there's, there's a good number that they're happy with, then you'll move on to the next stage which is stage three, your trigger shot. Stage three, your trigger shot. Your trigger shot is given between about day eight and 13 in your cycle um, and your the medication used for the trigger shot is something called HCG. So this is human chorionic gonadotrophin, a bit of a mouthful. Um, and this basically makes your um, follicles mature. So they, they complete the maturation phase and it stimulates ovulation. The important thing with this trigger shot is that you take it at exactly the right time and that's 36 hours before you go in for your egg retrieval. Um, and your clinic will tell you what time you need to take it and you definitely can't deviate from that time. Stage 4a is egg retrieval and sperm collection. This is about 9 to 14 days in your cycle and 36 hours after your trigger shot. You'll have a minor surgical procedure at your fertility clinic to retrieve the eggs from the follicles that have been stimulated um, during the previous stages. You're generally sedated for this procedure and once the, um, the egg collection, egg retrieval has been completed, they will inform you of the number of mature eggs that you have. Please note that quantity doesn't always mean quality. It's so easy to get focused on the number of eggs that you have during egg retrieval and you can be like, oh my god, I don't have enough eggs. Where in actual fact, as long as they're good quality, that, that's the most important thing. Sperm collection will also happen at this stage if you are using your partner's sperm or if you're using um, a donor sperm that you know and they're going to provide the sample on the day. This will be done at the same time. If you're using like a frozen sample um, from a donor or your partner, then that will already be at the clinic, so you, that, that won't need to be collected on that day. 
Stage 4b, which is timed intercourse or IUI, which is also known as artificial insemination. So if you are going into the clinic um, to have the IUI, the sperm will then be put directly into your uterus. So they basically put a small catheter through your cervix and then they insert the sperm directly in the uterus so it has it doesn't have to have as far to swim. I do talk about IUI throughout the programme, so if you want more information about that, you can just go to that section. If you are having timed intercourse, then the clinic will tell you that you need to start having intercourse every day or every other day around the time that you're having the trigger shot to maximise your chance of a spontaneous conception happening. If this is the route for you, um, then you don't actually need to really pay attention to the next stages because we're focusing on, on the kind of egg retrieval part of things and you can just jump directly to stage seven in the cycle. Stage five, fertilization and embryo development. This is approximately day 10 to 15 in your cycle and this is applicable if you're having IVF or ICSI. The embryologist will basically take over at this point and they will be your point of contact. So they'll update you also, it depends on the clinic. Some clinics update you every day, some clinics update you on day one, and then maybe day three, and then day five. Um, just double check with them how often they're gonna update you so that you can manage your expectations. So during this process of your um, eggs being fertilized, and the embryos developing, you will lose some along the way. So if, for example, you started off with eight fertilized eggs on day one um, by the time you get to day three you might have six by the time you get to day five you might have three or four when you go in for your transfer on that morning they will update you as to how many you have it is very nerve-wracking and it can be quite a stressful time waiting to find out how your embryos are doing you will then move on to transfer and that generally happens on day three or day five Occasionally it can be day six or day seven. It's very common to be anxious during this stage and unfortunately there's not a lot you can do about it. But do liaise with the clinic and they will keep you informed about what's happening with your little embryos. Stage six is embryo transfer. This normally happens between day 18 and day 22 in your cycle. So you will be contacted by the clinic about when you need to go back in to have your embryo transferred. And this is normally done on day three, day five, Sometimes day six or day seven, the most common is day five, but really does depend on your, your individual case on when you have that transfer and your, your clinic will inform you of that. So once you get to the clinic for your embryo transfer, your embryologist will let you know how many embryos you have that day. And that can be, that can be quite difficult because generally as you go along, you do lose embryos in the process. So when you go in on, let's say you're going on day five, um, on day three they might have informed you that you had six and then on day five you might have three. So be prepared that the number will most likely be less. Then what happens is you're awake, you have a little tube put through your cervix, they put the embryo into your uterus, uh, you can have your partner with you um, and you, you, you know, relax for like 20-30 minutes, you'll be lying down, I say relax loosely, um, and then you can basically carry on with your day. It does feel very similar to a smear test, so it can be a bit uncomfortable, but it, it, it's nowhere near as intense as having the egg retrieval process. And you can have your partner or a support person with you um, while you're going through this part of the process. Stage seven is the two week wait, and this is approximately day 18 to day 35 in your cycle. So it's quite a vast range because it's two weeks of waiting. This is very difficult for some people because your monitoring seems to slow down at this point. Um, you've had your embryo transferred and you just have to wait to see if you're pregnant. So some people find this bit very challenging. You will still take your medication during this period. You'll be taking mostly progesterone. Um, and I will talk about this in more detail because there's so many layers to the two week wait. Stage eight is pregnancy test and you'll be testing on approximately day 32 to day 48 of your cycle. You've had a blood test between day 10 and day 13 after you've had transfer or you'll do a home pregnancy test approximately 14 days after the embryo transfer. 
Now I know there was a lot of information for you to take in in this section, but I'm now going to break it down for you just to cover each stage in a little bit more detail.